Aaron Winkle in the line and Aye. Airbridge collapsing. <laughs> There's, oh, the sponsor, oh, the sponsor, Kevin Crawford. Round one of the 2023 KNC Groundworks Scottish Rally Championship is looking like it's going to be a cracker. An astonishing 15 R5 and Rally 2s on the entry list for the AM Philip Truck Tech Snowman Rally, ready to do battle with some of the quickest impresses and evos in the country. Excuse me, last time I was on the gravel I was on my roof at Carlisle and I haven't been back out on the gravel since then so I think I'll take the first stage and, and see where we're at. And new tyres, new navigator, how's it all no, going? Right. Well Hannah's uh, we've not been in the car together since so one of these kind of I'll meet you at the I'll meet you at the, the corner and let's go. <laughs> so, but I remember five years ago Cammy Fair started with me and I said to Hannah, no pressure, but the first rally Cammy and I won it. So uh, you've only equal that probably or better. So. Yeah, we had a little run in it yesterday morning um, and that's kind of settled my nerves because it's completely different to an Evo. Um, a lot more different than I thought it was going to be. So no, I am. I'm looking forward to it and see what we can do. Test couldn't have gone better. Um, I was nervous about the car being different. It just felt great. So yeah, I'm hoping to have a good one. Well, cars are a full cosmetic rebuild as well as uh, a new engine and diffs, suspension, brakes. Just the whole works really so Ken's been busy since we left the Carlisle in October so I don't think he's had a day off actually so maybe Christmas day yeah I'm excited for it to be fair yeah I've never see I've never been up here it's a long way but uh, it'll hope to be an enjoyable day uh, very nervous uh, but looking forward to that and um, this rally's never been good to me so the, we'd, we're, we're keen to see the finish that's for sure We've, we have made a few changes to the turbo and things Strangely enough, we put a smaller one on and it seems to improve things. It just the car seems much more responsive. So just hoping for a clean run um, without any disasters, hopefully. And they all line up behind two-time snowman winners Michael Binney and Claire Mole, celebrating 50 rallies as a team and enjoying a visit from one of Claire's most successful teammates. Yeah, I didn't realise. I knew I was getting close, but Claire presented us with a cake. Uh, last night at Scrutineering and uh, I thought it was somebody's 50th birthday to be honest with you I was looking around at all the old folk but no it was uh, it was our 50th rally so yeah it's pretty exciting. So what's your plans for today then? Um, we are just going to have to go and do our own thing I think we've got I think it was 15 rally twos or r5s behind us so just need to forget about them and you know, it's still trying to build confidence um, after the two whoopsies last year so um, just go and do our own thing and forget about those guys. It's been a long time since we competed here. With the, we worked out last night, it's 23 years since we last competed in Scotland together. Wow, <laughs> so are you going out to the stages? Are you helping in service? I, I think we'll do a little bit of both. So uh, I'm hoping to get up to, uh, out to the stage as well. So, But I will mostly kick the tyres. So. <laughs> <laughs> Give some advice from afar. Hmm. I think it, it's hard to do. I won't give it a hit. My secrets away. <laughs> <laughs> like Bob Laney and Rogie made up the opening look. The weather cold, but dry for the time being. <laughs> and first on the road, Binny and Mole were equal fourth fastest on the opener and third equal in stage two. Happy with their start, they headed into first service in fifth. <laughs> East Riding winners David Henderson and Chris Lees tied with the Evo in the first test. Feeling they were being too cautious, they began to up the pace in two, taking a second from the Lancer. The Fiesta fourth at first service.
Car number three was second after two stages. Despite feeling that they were too cautious, Freddie Milne and Patrick Walsh were equal fastest on stage one and fourth in stage two. They were just four seconds clear of the new partnership of Jock Armstrong and Hannah McKillop. Out on MRF tyres for the first time, Jock had enjoyed his morning, setting two top three times. Well, that covers second to fifth, but who was leading? Scott Macbeth and Dan Forsyth are the early sensations. Jumping into a McKinstry Fiesta for the first time, they tied for fastest in stage one with Milne and Walsh. SS2 was even better, 10 seconds faster than anyone else, to head into first service with a 13 second lead. Just three seconds down on Michael Binney, John Wink and Neil Shanks were quickly adapting to their upgraded I-20. Second quickest in one was followed up by seventh quickest in two as John built his pace. Angus Laurie and Paul Gribben were only four seconds further back after a strong start. The Black Evo just two seconds ahead of Finlay Retson and Paul Beaton. Winner at Crail in 2022, Finlay was experiencing the Rally 2 car on gravel for the first time and was happy with his morning's work. Not new to rallying, but new to these stages, Stephen Petch and Michael Wilkinson are a welcome addition to the SRC for this year. The Fiesta an early ninth, and just four seconds ahead of Hugh Brunton and Drew Sturrock. Now in a Fabia, they struggled to find a groove on the opening loop, and were planning some changes at first service. Scott, he's flying, that last stage, his time is incredible, so I'm being way too cautious, I can feel it, um, just being too scared and stuff, I've got the notes, I know it's flat and breaking, but my dad used to always say, you've got to have a right moment every stage, and I've had zero moments, just, I think, um, yeah, try and find a bit of bravery this week. It's been, uh, been interesting, uh, a lot of people complain of lack of grip, but I think we're all in the same boat. Brilliant stages, you know, you don't get a chance to drive these stages without the snow and I say that to Hannah, Hannah's just a kid here as far as I've never, never been it, but really, honestly, they are driver stages, so suits this old car, suits me as well. Oh, just too cautious, too rusty. So about halfway through that stage I started to feel like I was getting somewhere with it, but we'll see what happens on the next one. Yeah, we've had a good morning actually. I'm um, quite surprised at that because I've been not doing anything too daft, just been trying to keep it as straight as possible and try and carry the, the, the momentum as much as I can. So yeah, really quite quite happy. Yeah. A single run through Loch Letter made up the middle loop and it provided plenty of drama. And first to experience the drama were Henderson and Lees, arriving back at service still in fifth, but running very late on the road. We'll let David tell the story. Yeah, that didn't go so well. So I came over a crest and landed, landed slightly to one side of the road and just hit a massive rock. I thought I had a double front puncture straight away, uh, but it turns out I've broken the broken my side suspension and it took the tyre straight off and that did two miles like that so I'm amazed I only lost 20 seconds. It was much harder getting back to service with only one wheel steering though. Yeah I was going to say, are you confident that you can get fixed in service? The lads seem quite confident but they haven't had a good look at it yet so I, I just don't know. Hopefully, hopefully they will. Unfortunately they were one part short of fixing the car and they were out. Milne and Walsh 
were the first victims of the infamous Loch Letter hairpin. Not entirely Freddy's mistake, it turned out a small wiring issue meant the handbrake was locking the fronts as well as the rears. They were eventually pulled out, but seven minutes had been lost. Macbeth and Forsyth continued to lead, third quickest, despite overheating brakes and a spin. Second quickest, Armstrong and McKillop continued to adjust the car to suit the new tyres. The Impreza just two seconds clear of Binny and Mole, the evil fastest through stage three. Fourth quickest and now fourth overall, Wink and Shanks were continuing to find out how the upgrades worked. The I-20 just seven seconds away from a podium with two stages to go. Retson and Beaton moved up to sixth in this stage, despite Finlay being distracted by wisps of smoke in the cockpit. They were now nine seconds clear of Laurie and Gribbon, the evil crew finding stage three to be hard work. The black car was only two seconds up on a titanic scrap between Scott Beatty and Peridor Davies' Evil and the proton of Mark McCulloch and Michael Hendry. Separated by just one second after three stages, the two crews were really enjoying the battle. One second and two stages, where do you think we'll be at the end? Good bit of <laughs> As long as it's not in its room. Ah, yeah, that would be a good finish, aye. No, as long as we've both had a good day, it'll not matter. It's just going out and enjoying it, that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Brunton and Sturrock were now in the groove, but luck wasn't on their side. A puncture towards the end of the stage holding them back. The Fabia still 10th. Petch and Wilkinson dropped to 12th in this stage. No real issues beyond the surface being tough to read. They were just four seconds up on fellow snowman debutantes Niall Devine and Liam McIntyre. The Irish crew speeding up as they learned the snowman stages. Struggled. Um, probably four miles ago, I started getting a long brake pedal, just my own doing, left foot braking too much, and then the second to last corner I had no brakes and had a spin, so we dropped maybe eight to ten seconds. But it was good to obviously have a 16 second lead, so get some tyres on it and get it checked and just uh, keep our heads for this next two, hopefully. Yeah, good, just keep it clean, just same as what we've been doing this morning, really. Just keep our heads together and uh, hopefully by the end of the day we'll see what happens. Like. No, I'm quite happy when it is, a bit of pressure, isn't it, round about us all, so uh, you never say never. Uh, Freddie fell off the road there. David Henderson's got a puncture, he had an unlucky puncture, I think, so uh, they're kind of dropping about. So you're either in it or you're out, so we're still in it. Well, it was fine, we just went at our own pace and... Uh, no big risks, but just, you know, kept it smooth and, to be honest, it didn't feel quick, but the time was there, so uh, didn't expect it, but I'll take it. He's driving really well and the car's brilliant. Can only thank the guys for the work they put in over the winter. The car is fantastic to drive, so. Yeah, just uh, one of them really daft things. Just went wide at the hairpin, got stuck in a ditch and almost got, thought it got going, got going. This guy's trying to push us and then eventually hooked on a tow rope, but we're back the time we've been out of the car, so I think five or six minutes. So. In the Moats Offshore Juniors, first blood went to Murray Mackay and Andrew McCaskill, despite being backwards in stage one. Jim Robertson and Mike Curry took the honours in the Haddo Energy Super Seniors in their Mark II. <laughs> Reigning ladies champion Aileen Forrest opened her title defence with another ladies win in her Evo. And for a more in-depth look at the two-wheel drives and the classes, keep an eye out for our further reviews coming soon. The final loop was a rerun of stage one and two, and the drama wasn't over yet. And that big drama came early in Bob Laney, Macbeth and Forsyth's phenomenal drive coming to an end with an accident on a notoriously difficult off-camber section of the stage. 
Both were taken to hospital for checks but thankfully got away without serious injury. A sad end to an excellent performance. The big battle between Beattie and McCulloch was decided early in the final stage. Mark and Michael forced to stop and change a puncture, the Proton dropping to 13th overall at the end of the event. Twelfth overall, the Groundwater Lift Trucks Subaru Cup and the Alban Garage Challengers win all went to the same crew. John McElraith and Heather Grisdale producing one of the drives of the event in their Clubman Spec Impreza. John reckoning he pushed the car harder on this event than he has ever done in the past. After a fairly poor run by their standards on the East Riding stages, Peter Stewart and Harry Marchbank were very happy to be back on the gravel. Despite feeling they were too cautious on the downhill sections, they took the Autoshop two-wheel drive win by over a minute at the finish, along with 11th overall. The McCulloch puncture was a blessing in disguise for Beattie and Davies. Further down the same stage, they too suffered a puncture, but were able to carry on. Tenth overall, and third Evo home was a solid start to the season. Well, this is smoking. Is this Scott Beattie? Is this a puncture? Oh. Former Snowman winners Donny McDonald and Andrew Faulkner were a last-minute entry in their Fiesta. Building their pace all day as they readjusted to gravel, they were satisfied with ninth overall at the finish. <laughs> Thirty seconds up the road, Irish crew Niall Devine and Liam McIntyre were very happy with their first snowman performance. The Blue Fiesta just six seconds down on fellow snowman first-timers Stephen Petch and Michael Wilkinson. And after their steady start, Brunton and Sturrock settled on a fast but safe pace for the final loop with one eye on the Malcolm Wilson rally the following weekend. Despite the safe approach, they climbed to sixth with a fifth fastest time on the final stage. Hairpin left up. Hairpin left up here and then go. Right on, flat crest. Flat left one, 60. The snowman curse did strike for Laurie and Gribben, but luckily for them it happened at the flying finish of the final stage, the dashboard lighting up with every possible warning. Despite the engine being very sick, they managed to nurse the car to the final control to open their 2023 account with fifth overall. Two second fastest times in the last two stages was an excellent way for Finlay Retson to round out his four-wheel drive gravel debut. Co-driver Paul Beaton impressed with his young Chargers progress and there's plenty more to come from this crew in the future. Hey, he didn't let me drive like that in a lorry. And that left the top three. Binny and Mole were fourth quickest in stage four but that dropped them to third, just two seconds away from second. Another fourth quickest time on the final test saw them secure a solid third overall. A good start to the season as they continue to build their confidence. Yeah, yeah, over the moon, yep. Just, um, we just did what we said we were going to do, just do our own thing and, you know, just let everybody do their own thing around you and uh, it's all worked out quite well and we've we got a nice stage win as well and we're, we set some good times, so, yeah. <laughs> Wink and Shanks set fastest time on stage four to close to within five seconds of the lead, with just the final stage to go. Third quickest on the last stage kept them in second, just six seconds ahead of Binny and Mole at the finish. A great result, paying back the team for all the hard work they had done over the winter. Champagne in my eye. <laughs> I thought you were emotional. <laughs> I'm there crying, honestly. Um, no, uh, brilliant. Ace. 
it was, I knew it was close going into the stage um, at that last stage and Michael's notorious for doing mega quick last stages so I was a bit nervous but I kept ahead and Neil shouted a lot at me so it was fine. <laughs> I, I would dispute shouting. <laughs> yeah, just like just a word for, for Scott and Don, the performance this morning. Um, first three stages, fantastic to, to have that lead after three. Unfortunate the way it ended, but the good thing is they're both fine. But you know, it's it's never nice when that happens. It's even worse when it's good friends it happens to. But we're just delighted that they're okay and uh, everything works as it should. So no, just got to mention their performance because it's superb. But taking the win with a fastest time on the final stage, Jock Armstrong and Hannah McKillop were absolutely delighted at the Dingwall finish. The fact that it was Hannah's first ever rally win, making the achievement all the more sweet. Can't, can't remember. I've never had such a good day for a long time, you know, quite emotional. <laughs> it's been good. I said the last time I had a new Navigator, Kami, I said we won the first rally we were in, so I said no pressure, Hannah. <laughs> there you go. And then today we've just pulled it, pulled it off today, so that's been really good. No mistakes, perfect, good timing, you know, couldn't, couldn't ask for it, you know, so. Uh, please, please. please is this your well. first win on gravel? My first win ever on a rally. Yeah, so the it's first a personal win, first win. It's a really special one, yeah. yeah. And yeah. thanks yeah. to Jock for having me, and thanks to Cami for recommending me, and all the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Cami. Yeah, Sorry, thanks, pal. Cami. We miss you, pal. We miss you. <laughs> so the old Impreza takes first blood against the army of R5s and the snowmen. Next up, the Speyside in 63 Car Club's 60th year. With some stages in the dark, it's going to be very interesting to see who comes out on top. 